Okay, welcome back. It is me, Osek, and today we're going to speak about something interesting. In the past video, I've explained how you can go into the ethical hacking stuff by having developer background, or if you want to learn how to code, what steps to actually follow in order to make this happen. But you know, the coding is not everything about cybersecurity, and I'm going to draw something super fast so I can showcase you that. So imagine that's an ethical hacker, in that case, an actor. Now, this actor, in order to be competent enough to, to perform in cybersecurity, he must have, as mentioned in my first video, three main pillars. One of the pillars is programming itself. But the programming, as we've explained before, is not the only pillar that he must have. Other pillars are networking and Beside that, we also have sysadmin skills. When you combine these pillars, when you know decent programming, when you know decent networking, and when you can operate with OS systems like Linux, Windows, Windows servers, and things like that, then, and just then, you can pretty much get all of these benefits and go into the cybersecurity, which is here. Now, here in my channel, maybe you've noticed, maybe you've not, I'm speaking about offensive security, which is penetration testing and red teaming operations. But I believe that for any cyber uh, security, no matter if it's an incident response, pen testing, or anything else, you still need to have this strong course. But again, if you are more of a boot team guy, then maybe follow and research what's the need for boot team in jobs. But for ethical hacking and penetration testing and red teaming operations, you must be decent in all of this stuff. And essentially, before I was speaking about programming, why it was important, how to efficiently learn that. But now in today's video, we're going to speak about something different. And that something different this time is called networking. Now, let me explain and start the things like that. Why do you need networking at all? Well, no matter what you do in pen testing, even though it can be web app, internal, external, client app, any kind of penetration test or an attack, it must have a network in order for an attack to be successful. You cannot, I repeat, you cannot execute an attack if there's no network. I mean, it's literally not possible. Either way, you would need something like a C2 channel to your infrastructure. You would need to do a phishing page and do some credentials. You would need to do any, if you need to do any attack, there should be networking inside. Now, when it comes to networking, we generally have two types of attacks and things. On the one hand side, we have client side attacks. And on the other hand side, we have the server side attack. No matter which attacks you, you are conducting, network is a must. Now, a simple example for client-side attack is something like a phishing, a cross-site scripting, or anything else that target user base. And server-side attack is essentially an attack which targets the targeted infrastructure, which are servers, databases, web servers, other components down the line. But here you are attacking pretty much machines, while here we are attacking pretty much personal using the machines. And this is the main difference. Now the key thing is that no matter what you do and which attack you conduct, network is a must. For example, if we take the example with the phishing, here let's do a phishing super fast. What is phishing? We all know what phishing is. We're gonna just simply briefly explain it. Phishing is an attack where you send an email in that email, you request something like uh, credentials can be something, access, or you request something else like, uh, hey, download this file, download this document, which can at the end achieve a C2 callback. So we are aiming at both C2 or credentials, which can be useful for our future campaign and to pretty much do other movement, jump into the network and do the fun stuff. Now, the server-side attack, just an example of that, we can do something like a OS command injection, where we pretty much inject a command because we found the missing validation, 
And with this command, we can now execute system commands on the hosted server. Now see here, in order to conduct a successful client side attack, most of the times we want the user to fail victim for it. No matter if it's a cross-site scripting or phishing, the user must click something or download something, or I mean, in some XSS cases, if it's stored, this might not be the case, but in most of the times, that is the case. While as for the server side attack, that's not a requirement because the servers are just operating just like that. And if we find a vulnerability on them, it's harder to trace back because there's no user interaction. And if there are missing logins and systems that take over and monitor what happens, it's going to be much, much harder to be detected. So my, I can say advice is when you can always go for the client side, for server side attacks, if it's possible, but of course that's less common because servers are getting more and more secured. But now let's talk about the networking itself and why it's needed. So imagine there are two machines. So on the one hand side, we have our attack machine. And on the other hand side, we have the targeted infrastructure. Now, no matter if it's a client-side attack or server-side attack, a communication between these machines must be made. Think about that. So imagine you send a link, which is a phishing link over email. This email must first reach out to the targeted infrastructure, to the user to who the email was targeted. Then if the user is not trained and he clicks the email, then something must come back the line. So if it's a C2 traffic, the fake phishing page for stuffing credentials, no matter, something as a response must come back. And this is where networking is done. Now, beside that, if we are talking about server-side attack, we again send the payload to the targeted infrastructure with our command. And in some cases, we can receive the output, where in others, we cannot receive the output, but still a communication and network traffic should be made. So understanding network is extremely, extremely crucial into actually getting good into penetration testing. It allows you to do a lot of stuff. Now, let me explain why networking is essential. Well, if you know good networkings, first thing you can do is to, one, set up good infrastructure. So, you know, when it comes to hacking, it's not the attack do not come at the side of the bat. We have to properly analyze, properly find exploits, or properly find vulnerabilities, to be honest, to our infrastructure, and then use them to get some kind of actions done, to exploit something, move into a network, and so on. That's nice, but in most of the cases, if we want to do that, we must create our own infrastructure, guys. We must create our own C2 server. We must create our own redirectors. So our C2 server is not detected right off the bat. We must be able to create tunnel servers. We must be able to create phishing pages or servers or anything in between. So a lot of attacks actually require for us to be a network architect, to think about the whole network aspect of the things, to set up a nice routing, to set up SL certificates, to make the connection looks legit and is to be legit, and all of that must be applied. So the first very, very important part about learning network is setting up a nice infrastructure. Because if you have your just a VM, there's no way you're going to receive a reverse shell. Yes, there can be things like Angrock and so on, but they're heavily monitored and they're unstable. It's not how you're supposed to do the job. So in the best case, you have to have your infrastructure, your tunnels in place, your redirectors in place, and of course, your C2 server at the bare minimum. Now, the next thing you can do better and good if you know networking is to establish tunnels. So here, when you are in some kind of internal network, or if you achieve some kind of a command execution via server-side attack, now you need to laterally move into the network. And see, that, that sentence to move into the network is not something we can do physically by stepping out. It's something that we do digitally 
And in order to just comprehend that, that in, order, in order to, to, to just visualize what happens under the hood, you must know networking. Now, most of the cases, this can be uh, established via tunnel. There are plenty of softwares that can achieve that. But when I speak about softwares, I want to say something very important. Do not think about solutions in terms of uh, what tools to use. Think about what proper technique should I use in order to make this happen. And then based on the technique, then you choose your proper software. For example, I have a OS command injection. And for, for whatever reason, I want to establish a tunnel, but it's not working for HTTPS, or I want to establish more, let's say, hard to detect tunnel over DNS. That's my idea. My idea is not to use DNS cat. My idea is to establish tunnel over DNS. Now, how that's been done? For example, with DNS cat, but there can be other tools that can apply the same technique by achieving, by executing that with different methods. So whenever you are learning ethical hacking and you want to get good at that, that's just a general advice, which is super crucial. Do not think about tools, think about proper techniques, and then apply the tools that involve that that implement these techniques. For example, the wrong question should be, I want to learn to use Nmap, but the right question is, I want to make a network discovery. I want to, to learn network reconnaissance, to see open ports, to see open services. And how I can do that? With Nmap, for example. But it's not the only tool. So that's the second thing we can do with uh, good networking skills. Of course, the third one, I'm not, I'm not defining them in a strict role, but that's just a general overview. So the third thing is actually network reconnaissance. So if you don't know how the network operate, it's not a good, it's not a good idea to just run Nmap and to run one Nmap command. Nmap is a tool that performs network reconnaissance, as I mentioned, and it should be used as a tool that applies to this technique. Do not depend on Nmap because sometimes it might fail. I've seen in, in environments where the boot team have created the rules for Nmap traffic. And if you didn't modify your Nmap, is that going to work or is going to present a false? positive. So beside that, there are all plenty other reasons why you should use networking and no networking. For example, uh, one can be network awareness. Things like proxy communications, IDS IPS systems, firewalls, and so on. If you know how they work, if you know how to find them, if you know how to see their config if possible, and to check if our machine is using some kind of a systems like that, then your job as a penetration tester can become easier because I've been in a lot of environments and most of the times there is a web proxy. This web proxy sometimes is super hard to bypass, it's super frustrated and you want to achieve a situ beacon but it's not possible because of the proxy. Then you can maybe use something like a third party channel or Discord, GitHub or anything else but there are solutions for each problem. The point is to understand what the problem is and that's why you need network awareness. Now, when you combine good network awareness, network reconnaissance, and things like setting up good infrastructure and tunnels, that means that you can perform good. Because most of the time, as mentioned before, a successful attack or any attack must send and receive packets. If there is no network, it's useless to speak about anything at the first place. So my advice is start learning networks. And you may ask how to learn networks. One thing can be, of course, by uh, doing some kind of certification like CCNA. I personally, I personally do not have a CCNA, but that can be one of the ways on how you can do that. But also one other way, which I think is super useful, is self-learning purpose and building infrastructure. So, so building infrastructure. You should see in my past videos, I have my own Active Directory. This Active Directory is inside own uh, network. The, there is a firewall that stands to the Active Directory network and essentially allows outbound traffic, while this allows inbound traffic, which is a realistic, uh, I can say, mimic of a real environment. And by building things like that, then you learn how they work. Setting up a gateway, set up a switch. And if you cannot physically do that because it's more expensive, 
you can do it over a VM. If you have a PC with uh, 32 gigs of RAM, which most of the guys nowadays do, you can for sure build a small network inside your VM, which can be fully virtualized. There you can export things like DHCP. There you can export things like proxies. You can set up IDS systems. You can set up firewall rules, net rules, and all the things like that. And when you, for example, build a base infrastructure, try to use it. Try to get a reverse shell. Try to establish C2 beacon. Try to send a phishing page and see what happens. See if IDS awards or what happens when the user clicks the page. Maybe try setting up, setting up some awards and build things on the go. So for me, I was going for this approach. It's not a fast process, but something that you have to think about. And a lot of the times, attacks are actually blocked by the network level. So I've seen a lot of good guys which are super good with more development. They manage to evade the endpoint protection in terms of the EDR, but on the network level, they are detected. So do not underestimate that. Make sure to pay special attention to the network itself because it's not something small. And if you have a good peer in the networking, then everything starts to get clear. Then you start to realize, uh huh, that works because of that. If I want to have a C2 beacon, it should be over this port. This port might be blocked, and so on, and so on, and so on. If you don't have networking, no, ah, sorry. If you don't have networking skills, the first time you encounter some issues, for example, the first time you do any map, the port is open, but then it's closed, or you see some kind of tampering or anything else. The first time you see that, uh, it's game over. So do yourself a favor and learn basic networking. Here, I'm not speaking about becoming the best network guy possible, but to know the foundation and the structure of networking, the different kinds of IP addresses, what's a public and private, the different networking protocols, what is TCP, UDP, the oscillator, and all that kind of stuff is, trust me, super useful and beneficial. And now, to be honest, all this information is available online. If you want me to do more networking videos, more setup of infrastructure videos, make sure to drop that into comment and maybe I can do it. I, I, I mean, I don't know what else I can do. <laughs> I'll do it anyways. So for that, I want to say massive thanks for your watching. If these kind of videos are useful to you guys, if you think this format is nice, drop your feedback. It's so important for me. Also, if you enjoy this content and you think it's useful, make sure to hit the like button and smash the subscribe button. This helps my channel so much. Also, if you want, make sure to join my free Discord where we share experience and knowledge and it's fun to chill out. So thank you so much and go learn some networking. Thank you and bye.